Welcome to Property Law 101. I'm Sarah Bronin, and I created this series to help you understand the basics of property law. So this series covers four fundamental questions. And today we are talking about the third question, which is using property. Once again, we are focused on the right to exclude one of the sticks in the Blackstonian property bundle. In another video, you have learned about the elements of trespass. Does trespass work to exclude everyone from your property? I think you know the answer. Let's turn to State versus Shack, a New Jersey case, 1971. Uh, it is a case about the limits of trespass doctrine, about the limits of property owners to keep people off of their property. The facts of this case are well known and straightforward. It involved a group of migrant workers who were living on a farm and working for a farmer. So statistically speaking, migrant workers are typically people who live well below the poverty line. Uh, they're mostly foreign born. They uh, often go without health care. They go without social services, legal services, and even access to education. As a result, they are subject to chronic health problems, deafness, pesticide exposure, uh, other threats, legal liability. Um, they are often marginalized, they are often abused, and most importantly for maybe the discussion here, they're often reluctant to go to authorities for help. So this is not a case about a, a migrant worker trespassing. It's a case about an attorney and a third party who were trying to visit a few migrant workers and bring them medical and legal assistance. When those two individuals arrived, the property owner confronted them. He said they could visit the workers, but they had to tell him who they were visiting and also had to do their consultation in his office and in his presence. When the two individuals refused, the property owner called the state trooper and these two were hauled in and convicted of trespass. So now we are at the New Jersey Supreme Court and the question before the court is whether this really is a case of trespass at all. The court is considering whether there are some public policy limitations on the landowner's right to exclude given the kind of situation that you see in the case. It finds that the property owner doesn't have the right to deny the privacy or interfere with the dignity or enjoy or associations customary among private citizens. The property owner could also exclude, could exclude defendants, however, if they were interfering with his ability to farm. But in this case, the migrant workers could receive visitors. So the court here does not rest its decision on constitutional principles, uh, the First Amendment or free speech or the right of assembly. It also does not rest its decision on federal law. It instead reviews the state common law right of access that is influenced by federal statutes promoting access and state statutes, but, but it is itself a standalone common law principle according to this court. In some ways, the Shack case is relatively easy. Suppose that it is journalists who were trying to go on the landowner's land or a bookmobile service bringing books from a library onto the land or a traveling salesman. Or what if the visitor wasn't an attorney but instead someone coming to collect money from the migrant workers? Could they be allowed onto the property? So State versus Shack raises a lot of these nuances and questions. My favorite quote from the case is, property rights serve human values. They are recognized to that end and are limited by it. So I encourage you to use that quote to think about all of property law as you study it. To what extent does property law serve human values and to what extent should property law serve human values? I will leave it there and I'll look forward to engaging with you on Twitter, through my website or through other means. See you next time.